Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Today we are going to harvest produce for my greenhouse for the farm market. And you cannot believe the difference in my lettuce and different vegetables because of putting the shade cloth up. We've had some more hot days and it's really cooled everybody down and they're growing wonderful. So stay tuned. My first stop to harvest is my bok choy. It's little wren, it's a mini bok choy, it's green and it's really versatile. But in the beginning, it was not a big seller at my farm market a few years ago until I started telling customers how to cook it and the best way in the summertime is cut it in half, a little olive oil, salt and pepper and grill it. Oh, it's just amazing. Now it's become one of my best sellers. So I put about four or five in the bag, sometimes six, depending on how big they are and it's about a pound and I always sell out. So last week I went to upload my video and I don't know what I did wrong, but I put it up and I didn't get any views. And in the video I was showing these two beans, the exact two here, this guy's crazy. And they were so little and look how big they got within one week. First thing I want to show you is the Vortex green beans. A couple videos back, these guys were just little tiny plants when I put them in the betel buckets. Now they train themselves up all, the betel bobbin and look at they're all the way up top of the wire, almost to the roof of the greenhouse. And the best thing is they're producing beans. Look at these little baby ones. They'll be ready to harvest in about a week. And Vortex, it's a green bean that gets about 11 inches long. It doesn't have a string in it and it is so sweet. It's one of my favorite snacks to eat when I'm working in the greenhouse. I am gonna to have to go through and harvest everything tonight because if I don't, overnight the beans are gonna poof out and get way too big and not be all nice and tender the way I like them. Well, it looks like I'm gonna to have to get my ladder to harvest tonight. The beans have trellised all the way up to the wire and some of them are actually almost to the ceiling and they climbed over and now they're starting the way back down towards me and getting a little bit lower so when they start having beans on this side it'll be a lot easier for me to harvest but I can't believe how many flowers are on them I think I'm gonna get a good three or four weeks of a harvest which is really good for the bean plants because usually you only get two or three harvested so I'm really excited to see how long these plants last I'm so happy my cucumber plants are finally in production. I've been trying to do a really good job with them, keeping the bottom leaves off and make sure I just have one main line coming up, not a bunch of little suckers coming off. And look how nice they're growing. I did have a big one on one of my other plants over here and I didn't get it off in time and this is what happens. The baby ones all shrivel up because the plant wants to put all the energy into the big cucumbers. So you want to make sure you get them off right away. And the way these look today, it looks like tomorrow morning I probably will have another 10 or 15 cucumbers to pick off the plants and wrap up for my farm market. Since we're down here by the cucumbers, I have to show off my pickling cucumbers. Same thing, been very diligent about keeping the bottom leaves off, just have one main line coming up. And these little guys are growing really good, they're kind of prickly. They don't grow as fast as the English cucumbers, but you notice I just have a few plants because if I get a couple dozen, that'll be plenty for me to put up for this winter time. Here's my Swiss chard, the cultivar's charbel, and I have quite a few customers that really expect me to have this every week. What's nice about it, it does really well in the hydroponics and doesn't get too big and the leaves stay nice and tender. So I, they tell me they always make um, omelets, you know, saute it and put it in an omelet, or just saute it with bread or uh, butter and salt and pepper and just eat it as a side dish. Me, I like to eat the stalks in my salad, so make sure I always have 12 or 15 of these when I go to the market every Saturday. Here's something I started to grow for myself because I read it is the most nutritional grain that's even more has more nutrition than uh, kale and spinach and it's watercress and grown it hydroponically there's no dirt in it it's so nice and clean because I've had so many of the farm market people tell me that if they do find it in the grocery store it's all full of dirt and they have to wash it and it just takes forever and then it gets bruised and doesn't last as long so this is a really good seller and also I have one of my customers last week she showed me a picture of watercress soup that she made and she was so excited about having that in the summer so when it comes to lettuce here is the crowd favorite it's my green leaf with the red leaf so many of my customers like to buy one of each head because it makes such a pretty salad when you mix the two of them together and they come back week after week saying they love the sweet crunch of the this crunchy green and the soft texture of the red my bib lettuce hasn't looked this good all year. Like I said earlier, the shade cloth has made such a big difference. Look how big these heads are. So my sandwich and BLT customers, this is their favorite. And I have to admit, it's one of my favorites too. You can't have lettuce at a farm market stand without romaine. 
and look at how beautiful this romaine is growing. Doesn't have any tip burn. It's nice and green. And I bet you these heads weigh uh, probably almost a pound. It's nice and crunchy. And what's nice about this romaine, you keep it in a bag in the crisper drawer refrigerator, it'll last over two weeks, which is a bad thing because my customers don't always buy it every week, but it's good for my sales because people appreciate how well our lettuce holds up. Here's my Genevieve basil. It's a really big sell at the farm market. My harvest method is cut and come again. So you cut the plant leaves before the node and then by next week I'll have brand new growth and new leaves to harvest. I probably use more of this in my kitchen than I sell at the farm market because I love to make pesto and my new favorite is, uh, is uh, basil chicken. Oh my gosh, I had it at a restaurant. We found a recipe online. It is amazing. So I really enjoy doing all the basil and like I said, it's a big seller. And when I do sell it, I like to package it in a couple ounces because if you're going to make something with it, you definitely want a lot of basil. So here's my spring mix. The cultivar is called Five Star, so it has five different types of lettuces in the mix. And I put about 10 seeds in each one of the uh, oasis cubes when I go to seed it. And it always has some red. And I was worried, being underneath the shade cloth, that enough, not enough light would get in and the reds would look kind of dull and brown. Well, that's not happening at all. Look how vibrant these guys are. So it looks really pretty when I package it up into uh, the bags and it's another one that is so easy to make into a salad. You just chop it up and you have an instant salad. Well, I'm a little bit behind in the greenhouse because at the beginning of the week I decided to take some time off and we drove up to Niagara Falls. I love going up there. I've been up there a dozen times or so. But this time we started on the American side and we have little scooters so we got our scooters out and went tooling around Goat Island and it's so cool there's a lot of history and it's just so pretty to see the rapids and see the American Falls. So when we got done doing that we went over to the Canadian side because that's where we decided to stay was on the Canadian side and we walked around we saw the Horseshoe Falls and then we decided to do the powerhouse tour. It's a new, or not a new facility, it's an old facility that they restored back in 2022. The place was built around the 1900s, the beginning of the 1900s, and Tesla and Westinghouse and all that were involved with it. So it's a really old, cool place that generated electricity for a hundred years. And you got to see all the old turbines and all the old equipment, the switches and the offices. It was really cool. But the best part was you took this elevator and you went down this huge shaft and you could see all the turbines, everything going down low. And you got down to the discharge tunnel. So after the water got done spinning the turbines, I had to go back into the river. And this tunnel was 2,200 feet long. And it was just huge. It was probably as big as this bay of the greenhouse height wise. But it was so cool that it was 60 degrees down there compared to the 90 degrees up on top. And then when you got down to the end of the tunnel, you're at the same level as the river when the water comes over the falls. And you could just look up and see the falls. It was really cool. So if you ever get up to Niagara Falls on the Canadian side, it is well worth the trip to go see that. Well, I hope you guys liked today's short little video since I dodged out of town and went to Niagara Falls. There wasn't a lot to show you for the week. And lately, I've been spending a little bit less time in the greenhouse. Don't get me wrong. It's still my passion. I love doing it. But I also enjoy taking care of the cattle, going for walks in the creek, going up to the hay fields and seeing what's going on, and cooking. I've always loved to cook. So I think I'm going to start showing you guys a little bit more of the diversified things I do around the farm. You know, I like to do my homesteading. I like to do a little bit of prepping and get ready for the winter time. So I hope you guys want to see that. And so next video, I am going to show you how I made sun-dried tomatoes and enjoyed the creek because it was a really nice, cool week that we had and got out there and just had fun with the dog. So I think I'm going to end this video here. And like always, please leave me any questions, comments, and suggestions down below. And we'll see you next time.